Hello out there, welcome back. Got a little bit of a different setup here. I think I get everything set up so the table's not going to wobble a lot. But uh, where I would normally do a video is uh, occupied with stuff. We got some work going on in my house here. So, all right, uh, what we're looking at today is a subject that keeps coming up is uh, is it safe to leave batteries in a car in heat? Well, I live in a desert and I, I left all of these batteries in my trunk from the middle of May and today is I believe November 8th or 9th and today is November 8th so they've been in my trunk for let's see was that May June July August September October so these batteries have all been in my car, packaged just as you see them, for about five and a half months. All right. Is that right? Five and a half months? So, May to June, July, August, September, October, November. So all these batteries have been in my trunk, packaged just like you see them, for almost five and a half months. And during the summer, even though summer is uh, over now, during the summer, it's over 100 almost every single day here. So for at least three of those months, they were exposed to over 100 degree temperatures nearly daily. There was probably a couple days where it didn't hit 100, uh, but that would have been because of rain or something like that. So I don't have a regular plain battery tester, but what I do have is a multimeter with a battery test function here. So you can see there's no 3.7 volt to test uh, lithium ion batteries, uh, 14500s and that, but there are, these other settings will work, it just won't function this part correctly. So let's go ahead, oh, I really screwed that up. So you can see there's no 3.7 volt for accurately testing uh, lithium ion batteries, but these other ones will still work. What I'm looking at is I just want to the, the read out the actual bolts that's left in the battery. Uh, it just won't function the lights right is all. But uh, Alright, so let's get into this. First up here we have a Streamlight CR123 battery. First up here we have a Surefire 123A. Alright, so this is plain lithium. It's labeled 3 volts for high drain devices. Surefire. Okay, so how did our Surefire battery here hold up? Alright, so we got our probes. Again, this is just a multimeter. I don't have a regular one. Alright, so let's check out our Surefire battery here. 3.24 and you can see it's not quite zeroing out. Oh. So it's never quite zero. Wow, it's all over the place. So checking out our Surefire battery here, at 3.24, and I just tested a minute ago and it was 3.24, 3.24, and I'm getting consistent, consistent 3.24. 
So again, that was a surefire. Again, that was a surefire. Focus. Surefire lithium CR123A battery. Uh, this is the size that a lot of uh, tactical flashlight uses. Tactical flashlights use, and some lights will allow you to use two of these in place of an 18650 battery. And uh, you can commonly found at uh, sporting goods stores and gun stores. Uh, if you have a camera shop, they might have these. Some cameras use these, but I haven't played with cameras in a long time, regular cameras. The ones that I saw used the shorter ones. I don't even remember what those ones are called. They're almost the same width as this, but they're a little bit shorter. So that's where you can find those. Now we've got a, got a 14500 battery here. This is a Phoenix protected battery. 800 milliamp hour battery so 14500 they say if they they say 3.6 volts All right so lithium ion battery and then phoenix doesn't just call theirs like uh, 14500 Phoenix doesn't call theirs just 14500. Phoenix doesn't call theirs just 14500. That's their designation for this battery, that ARBL14800. That's what they label it as. So 3.6 and lithium ion batteries sometimes do lose a little bit of charge over time when they're being set. Uh, when they're just setting around, they will sometimes lose a little bit of a charge. But 4.02. Okay, 4.02, and you can see the multimeter is not quite zeroing out. Nope. But we're getting consistent 4.02. So I do have another way to test this one. I've got a flashlight with a built-in multimeter. This is a Nightcore MT-10A, so it has a, uh, not a digital readout but it does have a flashing light multimeter. One of the many things I like about it. All right, so we put our Phoenix in there. And one, two, three, four. All right, so multimeter says 4.02 and the flashlight says four. So four blinks like that is four. If it would. so, it's uh, less than 4.1. Now I do also have some IMRs and a couple night cores, but these are unprotected. And I've heard that you can over discharge unprotected batteries, and there's a risk of a fire being caused with that. I don't know if that would happen if it just drained on its own over time, but because I don't know enough to know whether or not that for sure could happen, I didn't want to take the risk. So I did not test any unprotected lithium ion batteries. But for Phoenix battery held up really well there. And again, that's a lithium ion. That's one of the types that people were very concerned with many times. Next, we've got one of my old Interloop Pros here. All right, and they rate theirs. Alright, so here we've got one of my old Antelope Pro batteries, and they rate theirs, you can see right there maybe, yeah, 1.2 volts, and this is a Panasonic, genuine Panasonic made in Japan as far as I know. Uh, these are pretty good batteries, I've been really happy with these, using them for, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, some of my double A flashlights, uh, used to exclusively use two AA flashlights for uh, work, but I've moved on to 18650s now. So it should be around 1.2 and 1.275. Okay. So 1.275. And we'll test this one out in my little flashlight here just so we got a secondary reader. It's kind of handy. So 
one, one, two. All right, so 1.2. So we've got two different uh, voltmeters there, or multimeters, whatever you want to call it. I guess flashlight's not really a multimeter because that's all it does is read the one thing. And last, we have an Energizer lithium AA size battery. All right, so next we have an Energizer AA size Ultimate Lithium. So this is a lithium battery. And you can see here, it says they rate there is it so shiny, 1.5 volts. You can see it down here. So let's go ahead and test this guy out here. One point eight. One point eight. Okay, so that's uh, significantly higher than they rate their. They say their batteries are at. So we'll go for a backup here. MT2A, MT10A. like this is indeed 1.8 volts okay so this IMR that one I usually just keep in there uh, so a lot of people wonder is it safe to leave batteries in your car in the summer will they explode well notice I don't have any alkalines none of these were alkaline batteries this is nickel metal hydride all right so none of these are alkaline we all know those aren't safe because they can leak and uh, if they leak they basically destroy whatever they're inside of so if it's a flashlight a, you know mp3 player or, you know somebody's still got a walkman hanging out somewhere it's going to destroy that product whatever it is oh, is it safe to leave these battery types in here lithium ion lithium Nickel metal hydride, ultimate lithium, is it actually safe? I don't know that it's safe. I did it just as an experiment. And uh, you'll notice the lithium ion was packaged in its own container uh, and the other batteries. From what I've heard from other people, uh, generally they will leave lithium batteries in their, in their car if they want to leave something and not worry about it. And it seems like that's probably true and but all of these are known to be decent quality batteries these are not the bottom of the line so if you're going to do it going to do it if you're going to leave batteries in your car for an entire desert summer go with something that has a good reputation uh, not everybody likes Phoenix batteries but a lot of people seem to in my reading I haven't seen anything that is down on the Eneloop Pros for nickel metal hydrides or Eneloops at all. And Surefire is, uh, seems to be, for the 123A, seems to be a pretty respected brand and Energizer for your regular ones. Uh, if you go into an REI or something, you're probably going to see Energizers at least one of the offerings uh, for, uh, for their lithium ion batteries. And the people that shop in REI, with the exception of myself, uh, they, they uh, depend on their gear. You know, if they're out doing their mountain biking or camping or rock climbing. You know, people that are hanging hammocks off the side of a rock face and sleeping there for the whole night. You know, they, these people depend on their gear, including their batteries there. So 
if they're those people are going to trust the energizers i'm going to say they're probably a decent bet to at least give it a shot to i've used them before these double a's and uh old camera i had that took double a batteries and the ultimate lithiums even using them a lot when they started getting a little bit warm from use uh, they did hold up really well uh, the surefires i haven't put to hard use in a light where they're heating up and constant off and on but I have used them in lights and lasers that were mounted on a gun, and they seem to work really well. Uh, there was also, uh, was it Viridian? That's one of the companies that makes lasers for uh, handguns. They have brand of that, uh, their own branded batteries that seem to work very well too, and sometimes they're a little bit cheaper if you're looking on Amazon uh, compared to some other brands. I tried some Duracell for the uh, shorter ones, and I don't know if they're a counterfeit or if Duracell just doesn't have as high a manufacturing standards for their, uh, man, what is that, 1-2-CR-1-2, one, one is that what it is?